The following speaker is Katarina Herman, Global Head of Platforms and Beyond Banking at ING. Katarina works for more than 20 years at ING, 10 of them in board positions, first as CEO in Austria and then as head of retail for the third biggest retail bank in Germany and has driven platform propositions for more than a decade. Three years ago, she decided to move to Amsterdam to advise ING's management board on platforms in beyond banking propositions for retail and small medium enterprise. She will present us how to become a platform. Katarina, take the stage. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, if you look at market capitalization last year, what did the five biggest companies worldwide have in common? You might guess it, they are all platforms. And how on earth could Apple pull it off to steal the market share from the big mobile giants of Motorola, Samsung, Nokia, and Sony Ericsson and LG at that time? Within eight years, they were able to steal all the profit um, from these giants and um, you can guess it, the answer is again, platforms. So hello everyone, my name is Katharina Herrmann. I'm Global Head of Platforms and Beyond Banking at ONG. And yeah, from the title, you can already guess that I'm extremely passionate about platforms. And in the next 20 minutes, I will share with you um, my conviction that banks need to embrace the platform game if they want to become and stay relevant in the future and be successful in the future. I will also share with you um, very openly the challenges that are linked to becoming a platform, but also give you some answer that we found at ING how to tackle those challenges. But let me start by um, clarifying what am I talking about when I talk about platforms because there are a lot of different definitions um, flying around and also some misunderstandings. So um, most people talk about technical platforms if they talk about platforms and some people believe just because they offer third party products on their own website, they are already a platform player. But that is not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about platform business models. And the value creation of that, those multi-sided platforms, those multi-sided business models is a completely different one than in the traditional pipeline models like banks, where it's all about developing a great product, um, either yourself or partnering up with someone, offer that product, serve that product. That is where the value creation happens in pipeline. But the value creation in platforms happen by facilitating the value exchange between the players um, on your platform, between producers and consumers, and you have to attract them um, at the same time, which is a huge uh, challenge. So when you want to create a platform, it's no longer about um, focusing on the inside to become more and more efficient, to you know, really optimize your processes and products, but it's about focusing on the outside of mastering the orchestration between your platform ecosystem. Let me take the concrete example of Uber. They don't produce any cars and they don't even own cars, but they facilitate that people who need a ride from A to B are getting connected with a driver in their neighborhood. And they attract um, people with own cars who want to earn extra money to become driver at their platform. And the Value creation is by the perfect matchmaking to ensure that both have minimum waiting time. And that, for example, they know, oh, this is a re reliable driver and this is a good customer by in introducing a rating system and by introducing smooth payments so that you just have to step out of the car and payment is already done. 
This is how they create the value of the platform players. But why should you become a platform player if you are a traditional pipeline model? Why, why does it make sense to look into it and what are your options? One answer is that our customers are already in a, living in a platform world. They, they search on Google, they shop on Amazon, they take the drive from, from Uber, they book their accommodation um, via Airbnb. But the other answer is also that platform business usually outperform the traditional um, businesses. And um, Sanjeet Paul Chaudhari phrased it quite nicely. He said, whenever a platform enters a pipeline from market, the platform almost always wins. But why is that so? On one hand, they benefit from the ability to grow at only incremental costs. On one hand, because they are built on scalable technical platforms, but on the other hand, also because of what is called the network effects. The more consumers they attract, the more attractive is the platform for producers. And the more producers are on the platform, the more attractive it becomes for the customers. So like with the Uber examples, the more people are searching for a ride, the more attractive is it for more drivers to join the Uber platform. And the more drivers are there, the less waiting time, so more and more customers get attracted. So it's a positive visual circle that you can create via those network effects. And the second reason why platforms usually are superior to pipeline business is as a pipeline player, you have to rely that your product and services are the best. But platforms have access to almost the whole market and can ensure that they always have a fitting solution. With your own product alone, you can never pull that off. So those are two main reasons why platforms are superior to pipelines. And coming back to my example of Apple, how did they pull that off? Yeah, and uh, as I said, those giants, yeah, they had 90% of the profit of the industry at the time. But Apple used the power of platformization. They invented the App Store, they attracted app users and app developers, and suddenly the iPhone product was no longer the, the, the main part of, of uh, yeah, becoming successful, but the iPhone became, became more like a platform carrier and, and the attracting more and more app users and more and more app developers coming up with, with great attractive apps. That was the secret recipe that enabled them to beat those giants. And let's also remember Nokia and the other players felt safe at that time because they had a strong brand, they had a well-developed product and also heavy regulation to protect them. Sounds familiar? A lot of decision makers and banks still believe that regulation and trust will protect them. And yes, financial matters are more sensitive than communication and games. But you can already see how platforms are eating into the traditional banking business. Yeah? Take the Amazon example, yeah? the, the, the Apple Pay, the loans they are offering, the credit cards, insurances. Yeah? They are eating more and more into us. And as a bank, we have learned how to compete against other banks. But we have to also learn how to compete against these big platforms. But what are your options if you want to, to um, look into platforms? You can either become a platform yourself. And, and here Ping An is a, is a really great example, um, a, a, a gigantic Chinese um, a financial company that started as a as a traditional big insurance company and they really transformed themselves um, into this this um, uh, platform company with, with not only offering insurances but also adjacent services around value spaces like like um, health or um, housing 
and um, by now they have a, have a market capitalization um, that it has grown to, to 220 billion US dollar last year. So it's really gigantic. And, and this um, platform play makes sense if you want to keep the customer relationship and build on it. However, this, this play also requires really long-term commitment and investments. And, and using the Ping An example, they continue to invest 1% of its revenues into R&D. You can also choose to um, provide your, your services, banking as a service, yeah? um, like, like Stripe, for example, which is a, is a great payment uh, service provider for SMEs. And, and um, this company launched in September 2011, funded by, by 2 million US dollar, and has meanwhile a market valuation of 36 billion 36 billion US dollars. This option makes sense um, if you have a unique or superior capability that is in high demand by others. And the third play is, which by the way is not, not the favorable one of ING, but I nevertheless will use an, an ING example. We are, we are looking into all three plays, by the way. Um, the third option is that you can become a producer on a third party platform. And let me use in, in, in the, the, the ING example in Germany, where we decided to offer um, the, the loan solution for SMEs um, on Amazon. And the reason for that was that we, that, they, that we are the third biggest retail bank in Germany and we have a substantial wholesale banking portfolio, but we only just started with the SME business. So that was a, a great opportunity to increase our footprint very fast. And that is ex exactly the reason why this play might be interesting for you. Yeah, if you want to boost your sales by using the large footprint and the distribution power of platforms, then this can make sense to increase also your economy of scales. But how do you become a platform? Let's focus on the, on the, on the first one. Let me be very transparent. As said before, to become a platform is a huge and long-term endeavor and a lot of challenges awaits you. And I will now share those challenges that, that we encountered point by point and share what recipes we found at RNG, how to tackle it. It all starts with the willingness to change, the willingness to embrace a, a completely new business model, which you are not an expert. The willingness to embark this long term transformation journey with certain investments, but uncertain benefits. There are not a lot of people in the world who like change and uncertainty. And usually when people are under pressure and have problems, they refer to the known recipes, the known, known um, toolbox, yeah, which, which um, they mastered to be successful in the past. And now you, you nudge them into, into that new endeavor, this uncertainty. So it's, it's crucial that, that also when you started to fully understand the starting position, why do you want to become a platform? What, what problems are you really trying to solve? And what do you want to achieve? And last but not least, why can becoming a platform really solve this better than optimizing your current business? And only if you have convincing answers to that, then you can create the buy-in. All communication needs to start with answering the why. And not abstract, like because we, we want to become as big as Amazon, but, but really in the most relevant, specific and personal manner. What helps tremendously is support from the top. So, so my recommendation is you need to start there. Or, or let me even phrase it stronger. I'm convinced that without full buy-in, and support from top management, you have no chance to succeed. So make your board the most 
active ambassadors. And at ING, we had, of course, a huge advantage that our former CEO, Ralph Hammers, was a, was a platform advocate and almost every conference he mentioned that. And also Steven von Reichswijk, his uh, successor, is a full supporter. That, that helps tremendously. But let's also admit you need help. A stated platform are completely different than the traditional pipeline models. And if you just manage platforms like you manage um, your, your bank before, you, you can't succeed. So um, they need a different way how to develop the platform propositions, different than your, your normal um, products and services and also different how to manage the platforms. And what we did at ONG is um, that, that we, we um, used the, the, the help of external platform gurus to, to really understand the platforms. And um, the, the success, success factors like the network effects, but also the pitfalls. And we also added new innovation instruments like the platform canvas to sharpen our thinking. And, and up till today, we pick um, Sanjit's uh, brain when we want to pursue uh, platform business models. And he really challenged us to, to get it right with yeah, um, how to attract both sides and how to ensure that we create uh, engagement, that we have a clear understanding of the business model and uh, the, the data strategy underneath. What we also learned the hard way is that people need clarity. Just providing some headlines like, like I do today is not sufficient. Your colleagues really want to understand what it will look like, how the current and the future will fit together. So a detailed target picture with an underlying data and growth strategy and a clear understanding how you want to make money and when you want to start earning money and that shouldn't be too soon in a platform business are crucial. What also um, helped us and, and what we found equally important is to have our own protected innovation space with dedicated teams, dedicated ring fences, ring fenced uh, budget, with our own methodology and with the special skills that are needed here. And the ability that this team works really focus 100% on working on the future, while the rest of the organization can 100% focus on running and improving the current business. Which, by the way, doesn't mean that, that um, you shouldn't talk to each other, on the contrary. Yeah? So whenever you can go for synergies, please do so like we, for example, uh, did in Germany by combining the power of the biggest um, mortgage uh, broker platform um, with RNG's um, uh, most popular mortgage producer um, uh, part. And um, by joining forces together, we could grab way more of the market share and ensure that the customer always have a, um, a perfect solution. But it all starts with the right people. So um, ensure that you have enough challengers and, and entrepreneurs in your team, not only bankers. Yeah, You need also external challengers. Um, the right mix, internal, external. And, and also people who, yeah, they, they, they need to love the initiative and believe in the initiative. But they, they also need to be open to adjust the ideas along the way according to the outcome of experiments. <laughs> Personally, I can't remember a single one initiative with sales rule with the original idea unchanged. Yeah, like uh, just recently, we piloted um, a renovation um, solution. Um, and this idea um, started with a traditional matchmaking because whoever has done a renovation know how hard it is to find a high quality um, yeah, renovation company. I'm, I'm just in the same process right now. So I would love to have that solution that we developed there. But the problem is that the other side of, of the equation, yeah, the, the producers, the renovation companies, in this time, they have a full book. They don't need additional um, customers. So the, the, the matchmaking was not their problem. 
But what we have seen is there are other untapped problems, unsolved uh, problems, and that is that they often have difficulties to communicate properly, to understand each other. And then suddenly, yeah, when the job is done, well, why do I have to pay that? Yeah, because you also have to pay wet. Why was the tax not included? Well, I didn't mean that kind of tiles. I mean something different. So what we what we found it it was me more about communication issues and documentation issues that we tackled successfully. And now the pilot is exactly about that, and it's highly successful. So you have to have an open mindset. And last but not least, communicate, communicate, communicate. You can't communicate too much. Platforms is something new for the people and for the lot of colleagues, something scary or sometimes um, they think, ah, this will pass by. Yeah, I'm, I'm just waiting it out. So you have to use every opportunity and also create additional opportunities to communicate the why, the what, and the how. Share also all the step-by-step -step successes. Yeah, so the, the launch, the first 100,000 users, the first million you earn, yeah, to, to help people to grow the belief in the future. So let me sum up my menu list to become a platform. And, and let's be clear, this is only the menu list to become a platform. Once you are a platform, there is an additional menu list, um, how to ensure that your platform can really, can really grow. But let's focus on this one for a moment. You need to understand and communicate the why. You need to ensure full buy-in and support from the top. You have to understand the platforms and how they work. Otherwise, you can't be successful. And Good news is you can look into experts to support you here. You need to create a strong core team to describe a clear vision, mission and strategy for that journey. You also should create a protected environment, especially for the disruptive ideas. No one loves to disrupt themselves. Yeah, you try to protect your business, so you need to have a protected environment for that with also the framework, the methodology, tools and funding, including risk, by the way, which I forgot to mention. Deliver success stories along the way to create the belief, communicate, communicate, communicate. And last but not least, to become a platform is, is not just a normal project like other projects. It's, it's really a fundamental choice. So you need to have a long term commitment. Thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take your questions now. Thank you very much, Katarina, for your very insightful presentation. Uh, actually, I do have a couple of questions for you. Wonderful. Uh, the first question is, is there a limit to communication until you reach a negative impact? Um, usually it's it's way more communication that you envision yeah before you you annoy people it it will take some time yeah it's like like it, it was in marketing yeah when you as a marketer you think oh can't, I can't say that again I've told them so many times then that usually is a moment where it starts to to uh, get get impact uh -huh. but you you have to be also careful that it's relevant for your audience you know and there might okay. be different things that are interesting for 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 a finance guy something else is interesting than for a risk guy than for the marketeer so that that is something to be aware of but if you are relevant i don't think so <laughs> okay and the second question i have for you uh, what's the main benefit of shifting towards a platform but what difficulty <laughs> yeah uh, let let me start with with um, what are the benefits um, as said before, um, on the one hand, it's defensive yeah, to prevent that, that others um, that, that can always provide a great solution beat you into it. Yeah, that, that 
um, can grow as incremental cost while you really in this environment we have negative interest rates we have corona yeah so the banking business is highly under pressure margins are highly under pressure so either you need to take cost out of the system like crazy or you need to look for additional growth opportunities and non-interest rate income and that is if you go that route with platforms what you can do and let me add one thing as a as a bank your starting position is not a bad one because you already have the customer base yeah mm -hmm. and um, some of the banks already have already some of the producers so you have a have a head start yeah while while new players um need to start from scratch yeah you also have legacy yeah that is a different with for, from from new players but the starting point is not that bad yeah and and indeed coming to what what is a big problem it's really to understand it is something different and okay. to to embrace it yeah to set it up differently to to deal with your legacy problems with a bank regulation yeah so there are a lot of challenges here but the good news is you can tackle them uh -huh. okay katarina thank you very much for your presentation welcome Thank and you. enjoy the rest of the conference, all of you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.